<laughs> oh man, it's going to be an interesting night. So I've got to get this thing centered up a little bit. I wish I could make it stop wobbling so damn much. Hey everybody. Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you can hear me okay. Oh man. Well, as you can see in front of you, I've got quite the night lined up. Uh, we've got nine different pours of what's up, Nate and Trevor are here in the house. We've got nine different pours of Russell's Reserve. Big shout out also to Nate and Trevor because they provided several of these pours. Um, all these ones with blue labels <clears throat> are. <laughs> you can hear Yolanda yelling at the dog in the background. And uh, she's also frying up some chicken, I believe, which is tasty. Mike is in the house. Michael McAllister, what's going on, man? Um, yeah. So just so you guys get the lay of the land as I'm digging into this, um, nine different Russell's Reserve picks. Each one of these is a pick. Um, some of them are independent bottlers. Some of them are through liquor stores. Um, independent bottlers, I should say private barrels, some are through liquor stores. Um, I've also got a handy dandy gallon jug of water. May need that as the night progresses. And I've got a couple things over here. Got my mouse so I can delete all your ridiculous comments. No, I got Nate for that. Shout out Nate Cooper, who's got the wrench now. He is the mod. I'm going to be taking notes only in terms of scoring. I'm not going to go into flavor notes. I may try to talk about them or dig into, um, you know, specific notes that if, I, if I'm like, oh, I, I can't quite put my finger on what that is. But really my point tonight is I've done this twice now. This is the third and final time I'm going to do this. Um, oh, Sunday evening scotch. Don't let my handle fool you. I'm a huge wild turkey fan. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, I know I've got a couple of people that may be joining the stream from uh, Rare Bird 101, which is Wild Turkey Forum blog uh, channel influencer, all all the things. Uh, I've been wanting to work actually, work with uh, Rare Bird 101. Never really uh, put in the time, and this is on me. I've never put in the time to develop that relationship. Uh, to the point I want to, I would love to work with a lot of people and I am not the best, honestly, at developing those relationships. Um, all you can do is keep working to get better. So welcome. Thank you guys so much for joining. If you're here uh, from Rare Bird 101, and even if you're not, if you're here from any of the Facebook groups, if you're here from just following my channel, I'm so happy you're here to join us tonight. Back on track. So I'm going to be scoring these pours based on four criteria. Uh, each one is going to be on a score of 0 to 100. And then at the end of this, you'll get to watch me struggle through math after drinking all of this to figure out who is the winner. Now, I'm not doing this blind. I've done it blind twice, and the order has been very similar, but I can't remember what it is. I know the order's similar, but I have no idea what it was. So I'm not worried about that influencing me. Um, it's just going to have a good time. Zero through 100 is a score sheet. I've got a score, uh, uh, you know, a, a category for nose. I've got a category for taste or the palate. I've got a category for the finish. And finally, I've got a category for the um, overall experience of drinking the whiskey. Uh, the experience is really sort of a, a, a fuzzy category intentionally. It's a way for me to have sort of like a, a adjustment, I'll say, for good, positive drinking experience. And, and the reason is there are some whiskeys that aren't particularly exquisite on the nose, that don't really shine on the palate, um, but that are just really pleasant to drink. You just really enjoy your experience. And that is hard to quantify in the nose palate finish uh, system. So... I'm going to add that category in. I might use it more as just sort of a plus one in this ranking. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Let's see. We got uh, Mike Myers says, Rippard 101 is David Jennings, I believe. Good guy. 
Good book on wild turkey. Yeah, David Jennings. I, um, yeah, I need to reach out to David and and uh, talk with him. I know he's got a couple other people that are working with him slash for him. Uh, I got to reach out to David because uh, I've heard nothing but great things, and what I've seen from him has been good content. Let's see. Nate's joining some Russells. Ah, yeah, Nate's got one of the pours that's in this lineup. Uh, Actually, it looks like both Nate and Trevor are joining me with some of these pours. So let's walk through the line and talk about what I've got here. I'll give you as much information as I can um, and try to be brief so we can get into the drinking. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So we'll go. Well, wait a minute now. How's this work? This is my my left. <laughs> I think it's your left too. I think that's how these streams work. Um, start on my left. This is a pick, Cask and Cellar Private Selection 2017. This is their barrel two of three. They th picked three barrels at the time. Uh, I actually got this pick from someone in a Facebook group posting a photo and saying, hey, I'm here. I can get these for cheap because they're doing a special. You buy more bottles, you get them for a lower price. I think that dude ended up buying like at least a case of Russell's and bringing them back for people. Very generous. Um, by the time I got into the chat on it, the uh, only one left was the second one. So I was happy to have it though. Um, what the hell? Nate's message was deleted by the Google moderator team. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. Well, don't, don't fuck it up, Nate. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> Uh, the second selection. So that's the story on the first one. Second one, um, this is A1 Liquor Single Barrel 2020. Uh, oh, and let me, so we got some people here that are probably going to be more versed in, in the warehouse info and in the floor info. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that up there. Got Rick House. This is barrel 15521. Where Rick House D. Floor, it says 5612. Uh, you can kind of see it there. I don't know enough about the Russell's numbering system to know why it says floor five space six one space two. I'm going to assume that that's sort of like coordinates. So floor five, oh, caught it. Floor five, area 61, brick two, or rick 61, barrel two, something like that. <clears throat> Second one. This is. Tasty. Uh, A1 Liquors, Single Barrel 2020, Warehouse C, Floor 4. Uh, this pick is interesting to me because it was picked up by a buddy, John Warner. Shout out, John, friend of the show. Um, yeah, that was my assumption, too, uh, on, that, on that Floor 5. You can't reply to Sunday Evening Scotch. He, he's unreplyable, apparently, Nate. Anyway, this pick is interesting to me because shout out John for bringing it back from uh, A1 Liquors in Effingham, I believe. Um, but everyone I know that has got this pick and that has like bought a bottle of it freaking loves it. They are just over the moon about it. Um, and up to this point, it, I haven't really enjoyed it very much. So like I keep putting it in these lineups because I keep wanting to enjoy it. I keep assuming that I'm not right about it. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Well, the chat's going pretty good. Yeah, just don't mention the dickle. That must be what it is. <clears throat> no surprise that Google hates dickle, by the way, uh, for those in the chat. Um, it's just, the letters are just too close. All right, the next two on the list. These might be familiar to some of you, some of you uh, whiskey fans, uh, whiskey tube fans, um, influencer fans. These are both bourbon enthusiast picks. Uh, the one here on the left is Floor 4 Warehouse B. This is an eight and a half year bottle. And these are both some of the most recent uh, picks from the bourbon enthusiast. This one is the Camp Nelson pick. It is 11 and a half years and Floor 3. <laughs> I'm a little curious about this one too because uh, when when I first tasted this with Trevor and Nate, I do believe that this was kind of the consensus, not the winner. 
But it does sound like this one has opened up since then, so it'd be fun to get into that. Next, this is the Germantown Pour from Tennessee, floor four. Uh, I don't have the Rick House on this particular bottle, unfortunately, but I do think Nate mentioned he was drinking Germantown, so Nate might know. Looks like Nate might have loved the uh, the older the older bourbon enthusiast pick. Next, we have the Ohio uh, the Ohio pick barrel eight floor six. Again, I don't have the Rick House. That was an oversight by us writing on these uh, on these labels. But this I have it was floor six uh, Ohio's. Uh, I think it's their most recent pick. Barrel number eight. Then I have the Jindo, Michigan pick. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce that, J-I-N-D-O, Jindo. Floor four, um, Warehouse F. This one, I believe, came from uh, one of my patrons also, but not – well, I think this one actually might have come from Trevor through another patron, so love the whiskey connections, guys. Two more left. Uh, I'm going to hold off on this one and give you some explanation to the very end. This one is Mammoth Day, Valentine's Day, Mammoth Liquors, Valentine's Day pick, Warehouse F, Floor 6. I don't know if you've heard noticed that. There's a couple in here. This is Warehouse F, Floor 4. I feel like I've heard Warehouse F a couple of times. I've got a couple of uh, Ds in here, the Camp Nelsons. Yeah, a couple Camp Nelsons here. So it'll be kind of fun. The Warehouse B... B, so D, C, B, D, unknown, unknown, F, F, and unknown. Now this one, the Ohio pick is Warehouse F, Nate has informed me. Perfect. So final one <clears throat> that I haven't talked about. This is a pick from a local group here in Indianapolis called the Degenerates. The Indie Degenerates are pretty well known in this area, um, and they uh, they uh, do a lot of their own barrel picks. A lot of times they work with the Rural Inn, which is where I picked up this bottle. I didn't pick this up through the Degenerates, but uh, the Rural Inn and the Degenerates often pair up for uh, store picks. This is a bottle that you people have seen out uh, out and about. This is the uh, Blackout is the name of the whiskey. I believe this was released the same time that Double Mint and maybe Juicy Fruit. There were a couple of really well-known now uh, Russell's picks that you'll see going for hundreds of dollars on the secondary market. And this was one of those three. Now, why I picked up this one and not all three, I was – who knows? I don't have a good answer for you. Uh, but that, it is what it is. Mike says, I wish I would have known you were doing this. I have a store pick from the bar down from Justin's Bourbon House in Lexington. Yeah, well, you know, this was pretty impromptu, Mike. So uh, I would love to try that one. Uh, if I had known that I was doing this, I may have reached out <laughs> to get some more picks. But, you know, it's kind of a spur of the moment. I just decided to go for this. So here we are. So... Let's go ahead and get into some of these whiskeys. Um, I guess I'm going to go left to right. I mean, no reason not to, right? So let's we'll start with the cask and cellar here. I may scoot the laptop up. I, I like this framing of everything because you can see all the bottles. But my eyes are not that good to read the chat. And I want to read what you guys have to say. So let's scoot you up a little bit. Just so I can see what kind of nonsense is going on out there. <laughs> Michael says, so show the blackout pick. Well, here's the thing, uh, Michael. Um, it doesn't have the. It doesn't have it on there. Now, I doesn't have the tag either, because I did this through rural. I know it's the same barrel because they split it, but I don't have any of the 
denotation. And I went back to rural when I realized it didn't have the tag on it because I thought maybe I had bought one that was wrong. And we tasted them side by side. And I know this is that pick because it tasted identical. But I can't prove it to anybody. <laughs> you just have to believe me. I will say the last couple of times I've done um, blind tastings, this pick has won. Um, I'm going to try not to let that influence me tonight, but the blackout pick has won a couple of times against all different uh, Russell's picks that were highly praised. So it, it, that, that further adds credence in my mind that this is in fact the blackout pick, but let's dig in on this, uh, this cask and cellar private barrel. This is Rick house D floor five barrel two or three from 2017. Kind of smells like fried chicken, which makes me think uh, the food might be done. It's got a nice citrusy note to it to me. <laughs> yeah, it might be fried turkey, yeah. <laughs> Yolanda's asking if I want my chicken. Um, I feel like that would interfere with my ability to pick out what the best whiskey is, but uh, I might still want my chicken. Oh, I far prefer the nose on that one to the taste. The nose is really nice and citrusy. Um, got some fruit notes for sure. Nate will take his chicken. But the, uh, the palate on this is a lot. <clears throat> Everyone wants chicken, babe. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. I had to kind of slosh it around a little bit to get to that note. Um, it's a real cherry, like a cherry cough syrup vibe happening. It's got a little bit of bitter oak. Well, I should say quite a bit of bitter oak, actually. Um, sweet honey right off the bat, but then the movement to the bitter oak is, is a little tough. Uh, but when you kind of slosh it around, it opens up a lot. And then you get that sort of cherry cough medicine. It, but it's light on the cough medicine. I've had some that were straight up cough syrup. This is cherry hint of a medicinal vibe. Um, I don't know how I should order these or like how I should process this. I've done a lot of blinds on these streams where I kind of go through and nose all of them and rank the nose, then go through and taste all of them and rank the tasting. And I feel like doing them in that order is problematic because it kind of forces me to like jam all my drinking into a very small bandwidth, which I don't really want to do. Um, oh man, look at this. Look at this, you guys. I don't know how I'm going to do this and keep my palate. Um, fuck. This is a real dilemma. Uh, <laughs> well, let me get, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drink really fast and, and get, <laughs> I'm going to drink really fast and get through all the tasting, the initial tasting, and then I'll do a post chicken tasting. How about that? All right. So we're going to be, be quick about it. Nose on this. I really like the nose on this. I think I'm going to give the nose. Hmm. I'm going to give it an 87. I really like the nose on this. The taste. It's just okay. I mean, I see what they're doing. It's interesting, but it's not like preferable to me. Um, I mean, it's worth trying. It has merit. It's not terrible. Uh, <laughs> like Nate, Nate says, yeah, you know, dinner at 930 is super normal. Listen, we operate on a European schedule here, my friend. We eat late dinners. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, 
I'm going to say 75. Not my favorite taste. The finish is good on this. The finish on this is better than the than the no the taste. I'm going to move that taste up. That taste doesn't deserve a 75. That's too harsh. I'm going to give it a 78. That finish is good, though. I like that finish. I'm going to call it maybe an 80. No, let's do 83. 83 on the finish. And then um, we'll do the experience after the chicken. So I can add or subtract based on my chicken rating. <laughs> It's going to be the chicken factor. That is really good. That I really like that on the palate. That's the A1 Liquors one. That's the one that I never understood. Maybe it's finally starting to open up for me. I do not like the nose, and maybe that was what was holding it back. The nose is slightly oaky, and that's about it. It's pretty, it's pretty tame. It's not very interesting. Maybe like a uh, little bit of lemon, but it's pretty quiet. Yeah, it's just kind of quietly oaky. It's not very interesting. I'm going to move this chicken because I'm smelling it. <clears throat> Mike asked if Yolanda equals Ariel. Yes. That was Yolanda. Nose is super boring. Um, we'll give that a 77 on the nose. The palette on that's wonderful, though. Like... It's a little bit oaky, sweet honey. You get some of that rye spice. It's there's a there's a fruit note, but I'm having trouble pinning it down. Maybe like a blueberry, but it's subtle, and then it moves into that sort of rye spice oak finish. That's a really good win. That I'm gonna give that an 89 on the palate. Um, finish is long, decent. We'll go 85 on the finish on that one. Number three, here we go. This is the floor four, warehouse B. This is the eight and a half year bourbon enthusiast pick. Now this one... This one is uh, a little bit more ethanol in the nose. Cherry and ethanol. I get like a kind of cleaner component. It kind of smells like cleaner to me. This bourbon enthusiast eight and a half year. Oh, that's creamy. That's the creamiest one by a lot. Super smooth, super creamy, just a little bit sweet. Ooh, the cherry comes out at the finish. I like that a lot. Cherry and, and um, like a fruit, like a uh, several different fruits on the finish. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, the nose is the weakest part of that one. It's the, it's got that cleaner component. It's not bad, but... Uh, you know, it's got a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of the fruitiness. Definitely some oakiness. Um, that's subtle. I'm going to give that, uh, we'll go 80. We'll go 81. 81. The taste on that, though, is pretty solid. Um, yeah, that's really freaking good. I like that a lot. I think I had to go. Uh, I think I had to go. 
Uh, I might have to go 90. I'm going to go 90 on that one. The finish, though, leaves something to be desired. Because the fruitiness really is kind of opening up as I keep sipping it into the mid palate. At first, it was almost like right on the finish, but now it goes immediately from this sort of interesting sweet honey into that really nice cherry blueberry vibe, and then gets a little bit bitter and oaky and astringent on the finish in a way that's not my favorite. Um, it's not bad though. I would say maybe 82 on the finish. Let's go ahead to. Uh... <laughs> Michael Fell, I thought I could watch this without moving to bottle pulls. Nope, the craving is real. <laughs> yeah, my man, it's uh, it's tough. These are tasty. This is tasty goodness. Oh, oh. Whoa, this is different. This is the Camp Nelson pick, floor three, 11 and a half a year from Bourbon Enthusiast. This is different. It's got almost a... Um, Almost a nuttiness. Almost. Wow. Lemon, cherries. These are consistent notes. I keep getting that lemon note. I keep getting the cherry note. This is the best Nate's ever had. I almost get this interesting, like, sour note, but it doesn't bother me. It's like the lemons are souring. I get a little bit of that... Oh, man, I get a little bit of the Flintstone vitamins out of this. The Flintstone vitamins that people always assign to dip. It's a fruity note. It's a mineral fruity component. And I think that shows up here. But not in a bad way. Oh, man. So, this is a, a deep cut for some of you. But Old Carter, Batch 6 bourbon this tastes a lot like that um that's dickel sourced juice the old carter batch six bourbon but this reminds me of that a lot and that's gonna be good news for nate and trevor because they both have bottles of that waiting for them uh and you know at the time they didn't realize it was dickel when they bought it which caused some skepticism Haven't been banned yet, Mike. We'll see if they get to me. Okay. Let's rate that one, shall we? Um, ooh, the finish on that's good. I like the finish on that pour. <laughs> okay. My chicken's going to be so fucking cold. <laughs> this is a bad decision. I'm also eating right in front of him. All right. The nose, pretty good. Not my favorite. I'm going to give it 85. Palette, I would say that's a satisfying daily drinker. So I'm going to give that an 87. That finish, though, that's the best finish I've had so far. Um, I think that's a great finish. I'm going to give that 87 as well on the finish. All right. We got some chats going on. Yeah, Sunday evening scotch winning on that elite beverage pick. Your chicken is going to be insanely cold. I know, but, but I got to do it. It's for the people. Got to do it for the people. Yeah, it's going to be cold. You want me to put it in the oven? Yeah, that would be great. Just keep it warm. Just put it like 170 or something. Thank you. That was our dog. <clears throat> okay. Let's go to uh, the Russell's Reserve. This is the Germantown pick. This is the one I believe Nate has. Ooh, whoa. That is Lemon Pledge. Bye-bye, <laughs> chicken. Yeah, yep, it's gone. It'll come back. 
Yeah, shout out to Jason Mash and Drum. I, I've actually sent Jason from Mash and Drum a uh, a sample kit with some things I don't think he can get his hands on other where, other places. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, I look forward to seeing his thoughts on those picks. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of straight lemon pledge. I guess a little bit of green apple. It's like lemons and green apple. I'm looking for something else. If I can pull anything else out of this. Maybe a little herbal tea. A little herbal tea, a little bit of toffee, but mostly just lemon pledge. Not my favorite. All right, let's taste it. Oh, just before I tasted it, I got something else. Oh, what is that? What is that? What is that? Shit. It's like a honeycomb. It's like a honeycomb note. Okay, now we're going to taste it. I like the taste of that better than the nose. Um, okay. Mid palate gets cool. That's a cool mid palate. So on the taste, you get this sweetness and then immediate wave of the um, oaky, astringent, slightly bitter note, but it, it dissipates pretty quickly. It goes from that bitterness, it goes like sweet, oak wave, bitter, and then into this almost sort of like cinnamon herbal quality, which is pretty cool. That just kind of lingers on my palate. Um, it stays around for a long time too. It's a long finish. I like that finish. I'm gonna start with that finish. That finish is gonna get a good score. That finish is gonna get, uh, let's go 86 on that finish. Um, <laughs> you know, I've got some great merch coming. I got great merch coming, guys. I own the drinkpro.com. And the drinkpro.com, the drinkpro.com is going to be a great website. But our supplier of products, dog is growling at me. Our supplier of products for that website is currently being DDoSed. And I have no idea why. If you don't know what that means, DDoSing is where you send bots to a website to just go to the website and show up over and over and over again. And you have as many bots as you can do that. And eventually it overloads the server and shuts down the website. Now I'm not using Amazon. I'm not using Walmart. I'm not using some big conglomerate corporation. I'm using somebody that's relatively small, uh, going through Shopify, trying to make the storefront. Um, but these guys are getting DDoSed hard and they don't have the IT department to fix it. So whenever that stops, I'll be able to put my merch store up and you'll know about it. But until then, just grab another drink for this stream. Uh, but, you know, here we are. <laughs> so let's go ahead and smell and taste this again. <clears throat> ah, Mash and Drum showed up. He said he heard his ears ringing. Yep. Jason popped by. <laughs> We were just talking about how great you are. So, yeah, go away now. We can talk shit about you. <laughs> oh, man. It's good to have you, brother. Oh, man. This, this, this is getting better the more I keep smelling it. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, But the taste, I mean, uh, don't you hate that? Like, it's beautiful on the nose. It's beautiful on the finish. And the, and the mid, like, the, the start and the mid palate are just, just not good. It's bitter. It's astringent. It's sweet for half a second. 
but uh, I got to I got to give it low marks, man. Got to give it low marks. Um I think the nose is not bad. I'm going to give the nose an 80, but the palate is going to be pretty low. I think meh. I'm going to give it like a 77. Not a great score. Oh, man. <laughs> I do like that Nate is lobbying for me. Nate is a good uh, a good hype man. Nate, you are my flavor flav. That <laughs> He's your whiskey wingman. Yeah, he is my whiskey wingman. All right. Let's go into it. Why is the dog is currently licking my leg? Can you stop, please? Wants your attention. Why? Okay. Come here. Come here. <laughs> see? Now you can be YouTube famous. You see them? You see all these drinks I'm drinking? I'm trying to I'm trying to do this for the people. You know why she's trying to get your attention, right? Is it dinner time? Look, I'm trying to feed I'm I'm, I'm creating content here. It's for the people. Don't you understand? It's for the people? The dad dinner. I have to take for the people though. Okay. You don't understand. It's fine. Ugh, that is our 12 pound old lady dachshund. Mini dachshund. Um, Who's a sucker for a schedule? Yeah. Uh, dinner time for her is 10 p.m. And uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I hope Nate does get the big plot, big clock, Jason. Uh, all right. Let's let's um, let's move on here to number. Fuck, I've, counting is getting hard. This is going to go well, I'm sure. <laughs> this, is, you I this is the Ohio State, not the Ohio State University. This is Ohio's OLHQ pick, barrel eight, floor six. Nate confirmed this was warehouse warehouse F. This is not not going to go well. I'm only halfway through chicken? this. I got lots of chicken. I'm going to crush that chicken when this is done on camera. I don't care at all. It's going to happen. All right. The nose on this is fantastic. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jason just said, yeah, Russell's single barrels. This flight is fantastic. Oh, yeah, man. We've got um, nine different Russells. Uh, all of these are different store picks from – most of them, honestly, are just like <laughs> warehouse, warehouse D, C, D, F, and what else? So there's another one. I, I swear there's another one. Yeah, it's mostly C, D, and F, though. Maybe a couple Bs. But uh... <laughs> Nate says, Kyle, if anyone has watched your live streams, you eating is the norm. <laughs> I mean, when you drink nine whiskeys at 55% ABV, you kind of have to. Also, Nate, you're the one that encouraged the eating on the stream. <laughs> The love streams, yeah. And I will say, I didn't read that, uh, but uh, Sunday Evening Scotch astutely points out he did not type live streams. He typed love streams. That's a Patreon-only exclusive, ladies and gentlemen. If you want a love stream, Ew. you got to get that after hours. No. <laughs> Yolanda is not on board. It'll just be me. So just prepare for whatever that looks like. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, here we go. Here we go. First off, okay, let me give you some actual notes and not just dick around completely. The OLHQ, I really like the nose on it. It's it's wonderfully fruity. It's it's beautifully it, blueberries, um, oranges. Oh, I get some strawberries and some raspberries. Lots of berries, which I'm a sucker for berries. I love sweet berries in a whiskey. Definitely get some honey on top as well. Maybe a slight nuttiness too. Maybe. Just some creaminess. There's a slight like creme brulee creaminess. Okay, let's go ahead and taste this. Oh! 
Oh man, the fruit is is pervasive in this one, but I get a minerality also, um, which is not my favorite. <sighs> It's so good and fruity, though. Man, the finish is garbage. The finish on this, not good. Um, all that minerality, which I don't seem to mind too much in the mid palette, on the finish, all that sweet fruit goes away, and you're just left with the minerality. And it's like, this is not what I want. <clears throat> Ah, uh, mash and drum. Do you have a favorite turkey warehouse for picks? <clears throat> you know, Jason, I, I haven't, I'll say this, I haven't had a large enough sample size to really feel like, yes, that's the warehouse. I've had really good picks from Camp Nelson, which is often cited as the warehouse. I've had really good picks, though, from other warehouses, from D, from B. Um, I'm sorry, B, D is Nelson. Um from B and C, I don't think I have a, uh, to answer the question, no, I don't think I have a favorite warehouse. But um, I think I've found more similarities between different warehouses and variances within warehouses. I haven't found one warehouse where I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that I can, I haven't found a warehouse where I'm like, that's so distinctly unique that I know a Russell's from that warehouse every time. I haven't had that happen yet. Uh, maybe I just need to drink more Russell's. <laughs> you were on your last one, right? No, but I will take the nuggets. The nuggets are back, ladies and gentlemen. And these aren't just any nuggets. These are chicken breast, hand-breaded, hand-fried. Gluten-free. Gluten-free, too, by the lovely Yolanda. Good question, uh, Nate's throwing up in the chat. I'm curious if you guys have... Favorite warehouses for Russell's picks. Let me go ahead and score this one while I wait for your answers. Uh, the nose on this is really nice. I really like the nose on this OLHQ pick. Uh, I'm going to give it an 87. It that just it's just really doing it for me. Yeah, it's it's good on the palate too. Um, and I might be an 87 also on the palate. The finish, though, oh, it's just not good. It's like I want it to be either oaky or fruity or I guess I just it feels like it needs sweetness. Like it doesn't have the sweetness that it needs to be actually good. It just leaves the astringency and the unpleasantness that can come from an oaky whiskey or from a mineral whiskey. Something with some minerality, like a dickle. Um, but but it's just it's just lacking. It, 75. 75 on that finish. Number seven. This is the last sample bottle I've got. Um, so Mash and Drum said warehouses F and D from him. Old warehouse H picks have some turkey funk. Yeah, turkey funk. I love it. Um <laughs> if you've ever had any old dusty turkey, you'll find some turkey funk. Uh, I haven't had any any old warehouse H picks though. I would love to to get a taste of that because that turkey funk is something I enjoy. I've got I'm gonna do a review on this in the near future of a 13 year Jap Japan only release of turkey that's uh, you know predates me on its distill distilling date. So that'll be a fun one to try. Um, Anyway, what else we got in there? Yeah, a G and D is in there. Camp Nelson, it's a sister site to the main. Yep, and Camp Nelson, several warehouses. Seen a lot of CNA and CNF picks. C and D is coming this year, but it's also a plain D from the main distillery. Yeah, yeah, it does get complicated. Um, I think the year statement does does make a difference. You can find the Camp Nelsons more easily on the old ones, I think. Um, just just because they've added more information. Um, but anyway, 
it can get complicated. And, you know, I, I, it's one of those things, though, where, to be honest, like, I'm not sure how much I care, which maybe that's a, a hot take. <laughs> but, like, if I see a Russell's pick for the right price, I'm going to buy it. Like, I'm not going to – there are – there are very few times where I'm like, oh, that's a Russell's pick. It won't be good. I'm not going to buy it. No, this is always worth, what, 50, 55, 60 bucks? This is always worth that. So, you know, yeah, maybe Warehouse D is good. Maybe Warehouse H. Maybe Camp Nelson D versus regular D. But, like, it's it's still going to be a fucking Russell's Reserve pick, you know? Um, I think some people are probably going to be more interested because they're going to say, like, oh, I'll buy a whole case of this one. I'm just, I'm just not going to do that. I'm just not going to fund my habit like that. All right, let's get into the Jindo. This is Jindo, Michigan. Floor 4, Warehouse F. The chicken's going away yet again. I am too... Oh, what is happening with this one? Holy crap. What is happening right now? No freaking way. This one is, I've gotten, oh man, it's umami. It's meaty. What in the hell? This is Warehouse F, Floor 4, the Michigan pick. Sent to me by a patron. Man. How did that get me? That was that's never been meaty. How did that get meaty? How did that get in there? I got a lot of I got a lot of things to read in the chat, and I'm my eyes are bad. <laughs> you want me to start reading the chat to you? No, nah, we got it. Yeah, send me a DM, man. Send me a DM and, and for those for those warehouse H picks. I'd love to we can we can set something up for sure. I'd love to try them. I'm definitely interested. Um Nate's got the butterscotch pie CNAs popping right now. I'd love to know your thoughts on that, Nate, because um uh actually, Nate, send me a photo of that sticker because I want to see it. Cause that that rings a bell to me, and I want to see remind myself. It is fun to compare warehouses. No, no question about that. It's a good time. Um, <laughs> nothing like a bottle from an anonymous person, Nate. <laughs> That's sketchy as fuck. <laughs> uh, I can't say I haven't done it, though. I've gotten several pours from people that I barely know, and uh, I'm drinking them on the internet. So, you know, here we are. All right, come on, Kyle. Get serious. Let's get some notes going. I have to I have to hype myself up. Once I've had eight or nine or seven or however many drinks I've had, I gotta hype myself up to get back on the, the serious train. I don't want to be all serious, but like you guys want some notes, I want to give you some freaking notes. Okay. So it still has that umami flavor, which is kind of cool and interesting. But the orange is becoming more prominent. What? The dog is staring at me. Uh, blueberries, strawberries. Now, this is the first one I really feel like I've gotten brown sugar on. Yeah, brown sugar. That's not a note I get a lot of, and I really like it on this one. It's a light brown sugar, though, not the dark brown sugar, which that's a whole other conversation, but light brown sugar. I don't, you know what I haven't gotten a lot of from any of these? I haven't gotten a lot of herbal notes. I haven't gotten a lot of nuttiness, you know. Maybe I'm just not looking for it. Let me, let me spend a little bit of time here. I mean... I'm real. the spice on this is really not prominent. Not much cinnamon, not much black pepper, not much clove. Maybe a little bit of mint if you're looking for it. And maybe a little leather 
like a saddle leather if you're looking for it, but God, they just don't stick out. What sticks out on these is either the oakiness or the fruitiness and sometimes the sweet aromatics. They're not particularly floral either, which is interesting. All right, let's give this a taste. Too bitter, too bitter, too bitter. People that picked this barrel, I bet anything, the people that picked this barrel were looking at age statements. They went, give me that old one. Don't do it, man. If you can, if you go on a barrel pick and you are able to, tell them you don't want to know how old this shit is. Because people instinctively pick older whiskey. And sometimes it's not better. And this one tastes like it's over oak. This one has spent too much time on wood. It should have been pulled earlier. It's a shame because it's got so much going for it. If you pull this a year earlier, it would have been fantastic. It would have been because you can see all those notes. You can sense all this interestingness, but it's getting overshadowed by the over oaked quality. And the thing is, it's warehouse four. It's not a high, or I'm sorry, floor four. It's not a high floor. It's not, baby. She's, I felt it happening. Okay, I'm glad you caught it. Knocking over lights and shit. It's not particularly high in the warehouse. So, like, you're not going to instinctually think it's over oaked, but there's little hot pockets. There's little cold pockets. Like, that shit happens. Sweet caramel, creme brulee. Hint of um, almond, and then leans right into this oakiness and this bitter, astringent. It's not oak flavor. It's bitter and astringent. It's just it's all the things you don't want from an oaky, uh, oaky whiskey. The nose on this is good. I'm going to give the nose on this an 85. Um, the palate, I'm torn because it starts so good. The finish is bad. The finish gets like a 73. Um, I'm going to give the palette somewhere in the middle. We'll call it a 79. Not very impressive, honestly. All right. What's going on in the chat? <clears throat> yeah, Nate says he knows who it is. He just can't say it's a patron. Yeah, yeah. I think I referenced before that I got the uh, the Michigan pick from a, a friend of the show. Uh, Master Drum said, "Yeah, the butterscotch heavy one's my favorite too." I haven't had a lot of super butterscotchiness in this lineup so far. Um, I suppose somebody could smell butterscotch on that Jindo pick, or maybe taste it early on. But um, butterscotch is a note I haven't pulled a lot of yet. I wonder if that's I may have some atypical picks, or that may be an atypical note for Russell's. Yeah, well, Nate just kind of proved my point. that I'm not sure I've ever experienced that from turkey. And then Sunday evening scotch, the butterscotch on turkey is wonderful when you find it. If you know of a particular pick or a particular warehouse where you have seen butterscotch that I could get my hands on, I'd love to try it because I'm not sure I've seen very much butterscotch out of turkey either. That said, let's move to the completely unlabeled nonsense pick that is Blackout. Now, the reason it's called Blackout, and I really wish this one had the sticker on it, but I didn't get it from the DGEN, so it doesn't have the DGEN sticker. The Blackout pick is called Blackout because uh, a friend of mine, Drew Black, uh, had got Blackout drunk at a restaurant, and there's a photo of him on the sticker, like, pass the fuck out, sitting in the restaurant. Hence blackout. It's funny. It's good, good humor. Uh, Drew is also on another Russell's Reserve pick that some people have seen. That's Dr. Drew, and it's sort of modeled after Dr. Dre's The Chronic. Um, Drew's a good guy. Uh, I don't believe he is part of the DGENs anymore. There was some drama in that organization that is none of my business, and I don't care to involve myself in. Um, but nonetheless, Drew is a good guy. He's been a friend of the show. Um, so hats off to him. 
<clears throat> and I like drinking the whiskey that's got his drunk ass face on it, even if my bottle doesn't. Yeah, Nate's going to help me out with that. Awesome. That's awesome. I imagine drums. He'll be doing my sample pack on a live stream. Yeah. Just let me know, man. I'd love, I'll, I'll definitely be there for that for sure. Um, I'll keep an eye on the channel. I, I, I get your notifications. I'm <laughs> yeah. Subscribe and click the bell. Cause I know I've subscribed to click the bell with mash and drum. So you guys should do that too. To um, this channel. To this channel. To, well, you can do and it to mash and drum. Yeah. Do it to mash and drum also, but do it to me first. <laughs> But yeah, I get the notifications, so I'll keep an eye out for that for sure, man. Um, shameless plug. That's you're damn right, Nate. Man, I got I got a channel to grow, motherfucker. <laughs> I also have to stop saying motherfucker, or else I can't grow my channel very much bigger. Actually, fun fact: the YouTube standards say you can't swear early in the video, whatever the hell that means. Fifty-five minutes in is not early. Fifty-six, no. Nah. Fuck it. There you go. Fuck. I'll say it again. I'm not going to monetize this shit anyway. Okay, let's get back to tasting. Oh, I'm glad you guys like watching this. This is a ridiculous thing to be doing. This okay. Is, these were supposed to be preview tastes. Huh? <laughs> yeah, these were supposed to be preview yeah, tastes. Yeah, because you wanted to eat your chicken. <laughs> and now the chicken's been put in the oven twice. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I get excited about whiskey, guys. I mean, you all can relate. You're here for a reason. Like, this is exciting, fun stuff. And although I am very excitable about food, sometimes whiskey takes preference. All right, let me catch up in the chat real quick. I'm going to start drinking this whiskey. Uh, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed my foul language. Cheers, my man. Um, if you're looking for a butterscotch turkey, uh, Warehouse K Kentucky Spirit. I'll keep an eye out for that for sure, my man. Thanks. Appreciate that. Warehouse K Kentucky Spirit. Um, I don't think it's from Big Red. The, the butterscotch pie is not Big Red. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. Now, this is Blackout. Now, I will say, I've had this bottle for a while. It's more than half empty. Um, the nose is very quiet. And I think that's more a function of how long it's been open than the whiskey compared to these others. I don't know if you guys can hear the dog making all kinds of crazy noises. She's trying to get comfortable. She's only vocal in the weirdest of circumstances. Although I, I, you know, I like the nose on this. It's, it's, um, you know what? This might be kind of butterscotch. Hold on now. Yeah. Maybe that's why I keep picking this one in blinds. This one is kind of butterscotchy on the nose. It's caramel and butterscotch with a hint of apple. A hint of blueberry. Oh, I got a sneeze coming. This is happening. That's how you know I'm digging deep into these pores when I start sneezing. I guess I get like um, a blueberry donut. That sort of sugary, which is my favorite flavor of donut. But that sugary quality of a donut combined with almost a, a light breadiness, combined with um, blueberry, obviously, it is really, really good nose. Okay. All right, let's taste it. Man, that's why this one keeps winning. Oh, that's good, and it's so long. I think that's the second longest one I've tried. Um, longest finish. I gotta give you notes. Hold on, I'm, I'm two in my own head on this one. This is just very, very good. 
Oh, oh, damn it. I like it so much. Okay, here we go. Let's get serious. <sighs> Gotta center yourself. Okay, right off the bat, strawberries. Moves into, yeah, the butterscotch, the caramel, a little bit of apple. Oh, and then, oh, man. Oh, man. And then it moves. It doesn't, huh, it doesn't go, you expect, okay, I expect whiskeys, when they start fruity like that, to go to either nuttiness or herbal or wood. And this doesn't go any of those places. It just keeps in the fruity lane. It's sweet aromatics and fruit. And then you get like hints of spice here, like cinnamon, and then it goes away. And then a hint of maybe like a slight, um, like a slight uh, cashew note and it goes away. There's little, little notes here and there, but throughout the entire pour, it stays in that sweet fruit lane, which is so my wheelhouse. God damn, that's good. And the finish... Um, this doesn't do great on the finish because it's not unique and it's not long. The finish does not stand out. So the finish score on this is going to be relatively low, but everything else is so high. I mean, the nose on this, God, I mean, I got to give this like a 90 on the nose. It's so good. My first 90, first 90 of the night on the nose. Not the first 90 on the palate. Here we go. Eighty-nine. That gets an eighty-nine. I like a lot of what's happening there. Finish. Um, I, I, I want to give it a high score on the finish. I I want to, but I, I have to follow my taste buds. I have to follow the data and not my emotional connection to this fucking bottle. Eighty-nine. No, 79. Sorry, 79. Ah, but that's not right. Come on, Kyle. Uh, I'm going to give an 81. It's not It's not good. Like, the, the, the metric I'm using, good, is 83 to 86. It's not good. But it's not bad. So now I'm on my last one on this initial run-through. Let me check the, the chat again. Uh... <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, Nate's looking for that chateau. Yeah, yeah, Jason said he saw that apple on the butterscotch too. Yeah, the apple and butterscotch is an interesting pairing. It works really well. Um Yeah, you can get some good stuff at Kroger for sure. Somebody teach Nate how to at people. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Is Trevor still awake? Hey, Trevor, say something in the comments if you're still awake. Trevor's my uh, uh, my go-to. He's, the, he's the, the big dog in the Patreon. I always appreciate having him around, but uh, he had a night off and went hard on a six whiskey lineup um, after not drinking very much for a long time. So he very well might be out cold. Nate, you're like a 75 year old in so many interesting ways. Ah, oh, there you go. Jason with that, with that institutional knowledge, you can't at somebody on mobile. Good to know. All right. Last but not least, and then I'm going to have some chicken pours, which are going to be a whole different thing. <laughs> This is the Mammoth Liquors Warehouse F Floor 6 Valentine's Day Release 2020. <sighs> uh, it's turkey and chicken night. You're damn right. You're damn right it is. If I had known we were making chicken, I would have made that the thumbnail. It's fucking turkey and chicken night. The nose on this is a little bit sharp, but very good. This is the first one I really feel like I got oak and nut on. I, I get that, um, honestly, it might be cedar. 
I get cedar, I get almond, I get cinnamon, I get honey. Third time to charm. There it is. Thank you, baby. I won't let it get cold this time. Or I'll do my best to not let it get cold this time. All right, let's taste this. The nose in this is great. Uh, the mid palate super disappointing. It starts off really nice and sweet. Lots of honey. Oh, and it gets worse. It just keeps getting worse. It gets like astringent and bitter. And then by the finish, it's almost like, um, oh, what would I even call that? Um, <laughs> vomit is not the note I want to give, but uh, it's in that category. There, there's a great whiskey wheel somewhere out there that I'll, I'll link to at some point if I can find it that shows like what can go wrong with a whiskey uh, with like different notes that you'll pull out of whiskeys that aren't really supposed to be there or that typically signify something you shouldn't want in a whiskey. Um, and one of them is that acrid. That's the term acrid note. Um, this has kind of got that. And this, the finish on this is actually bad. It's actually a bad finish. Starts great though. Starts great. Nice and sweet. Lots of honey. A little bit of fruit. A little bit of um, not apple. A little almond. Little uh, oh, apricot. A little apricot. A little almond. But then it just fucking all downhill. All right. All right. Nose on this is pretty damn solid. I'm going to give it an 87. No, I'll give it 86. 86. Uh, palette on this. God damn, this is a tale of two cities. I, I guess I have to go with it has some flaws. So 77. But the finish, bleh. This is an education of bad whiskey. I'm going to give it a 70. Now, got the nine done. Chicken nugget time. You have to have in your own next question. Uh, thank you. We got some chicken. We got some sauce. You know how we do it. Nate's always looking for the geranium bullshit. What? You're not having an orgasm over my chicken eggs? Guess they're not good then. These are really good. I'm lost in the sauce, baby. Oh, man. If I can't get this on camera. You guys see that shit? I'll let you know. Yeah. This is what I'm putting on them. Yeah, it's mango habanero buffalo wild wings. Call me basic if you want. I'm happy to be a basic bitch. And then I'm going to dip that shit in some ranch. You're oh, ready, yeah. Not <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Andrea. Okay. Oh, uh, it's so good. There it is. It, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming in waves. Oh, man. I really needed some food. Tell Andrea we're sorry, Nate. But I'm going to keep eating in front of her. You know what? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to eat a couple more pieces of these chicken. That was almost a sentence. I'm going to eat a couple more pieces of this chicken. And then... I'm going to eat a piece and have the whiskey right after. So I'll line it up so I have nine pieces of chicken and nine glasses of whiskey. But now you have to count again, which is hard when you're drunk or when you've been drinking. 
I would like to say I'm not drunk. Uh, but I have been drinking. So, I'm just cleaning the house right now. I'm just doing some housekeeping chicken. Housekeeping chicken? Yeah, it's housekeeping chicken. I don't know what that means. Okay. Now, the all important chicken factor, chicken factor on these pores. <laughs> Next love stream. <laughs> yeah, I think people just want to see me do some ASMR shit. All right, let's drink some of this water. Ugh. You gotta stay hydrated. <clears throat> okay. What am I doing? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Something about pairing chicken nuggets with your drinks. All right. Whew. I drank that water so fast that I almost passed out. Whew. You gotta breathe between your drinks. That's important. Important information. I got a lot of interesting things happening in this live stream. I think a turkey and turkey pairing would be great. Especially because there's so many different ways to have turkey. You can have live. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna eat them live turkeys now? <laughs> you, can... <laughs> you can have deep fried, you can have baked, you can have chicken wings. Turkey wings. <laughs> uh, turkey wings, whatever. You can have wings. Um, Drumsticks. You can do it uh, smoked. smoked. Yeah, smoked turkey would be really good. Got a lot of options. All right. Now it's time for the chicken wing factor, which has absolutely no bearing on reality. So let's go ahead and eat some chicken wings and taste some whiskey. First one, first wing is um, – these aren't wings. These are nuggets. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. These are uh, first first nugget is with the uh, cask and cellar uh, warehouse D. Here we go. Yeah, let's nugget hit, yeah. Mmm. That one does well. That one performs very well in the nugget test. Very well. Very well. Um, that gets a 90. That was perfect. That was exactly what I wanted with that chicken nugget. Let me cross out my whatever that stood for and, and make it the nugget test. <laughs> Give it a 90. <laughs> that was good as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for nugget number two here. And uh, this one's going with the uh, – this is the A1 Liquors pick. This is the one that um, I was rather skeptical of. Some people really liked it. A lot of people – everyone I know that has this pick really liked it. And I was kind of meh about it. But I liked it more this time than I had in uh, past times. The nose was just not good. Uh, the nose remains not very good for me personally. But uh, let's see how it does on the nugget test. Uh, uh no. Did it fail the nugget fail test? Fail the nugget test. God damn, that's bad. How can those two be so different? Yeah, I get the horrible score of the nugget test. Ugh, I'm gonna say 60. That's that has fails the nugget test. Oh my goodness, guys. My goodness. Thank you all for supporting the show. 
that thing that has devolved into this. <laughs> Welcome to the internet. All right. This one. Bourbon enthusiast pick eight and a half year floor four warehouse B. Let's see how it does on the nugget test. I don't know what she wants. Wait now. She got had dinner. Good nugget. That's pretty meh. That's meh on the nugget test. We'll give that a 78. It just doesn't pair well with it, you know? I I wish I, I wish I knew how to explain the pairings. Maybe in a more sober state, that's something I'll have to explore, put together, and do a whole video on. It's like pairing whiskey with food and not, I mean, you, you can do videos on just like pairing whiskey with food generally. But what I'm talking about is actually doing the tasting side by side and explaining why things work or don't work. Because I think that's something you don't see a lot of, but it would be incredibly valuable to people. People don't understand what they're looking for if they're trying to decide whether or not this pairing works or not. Maybe I could help do that. <laughs> Nate is, is uh, shitting on my experiment. You don't have any double blinds, so. This is, this is barely single blind. <laughs> I don't know. It's drunk blind. All right. This is the Camp Nelson 11 and a half year. All right. Here we go. That's good nuggets, so. though. Mmm. <clears throat> yeah. That pairs pretty well. Something interesting I'm noticing is that there's sort of a bitterness with several of these whiskeys that really works when you pair it with a nugget. It's like uh, you get a sweet, you get this umami, and then you get the bitterness. <clears throat> I'm going to give that a 70... No, 80. Uh, 80. We'll do 86. Wow, my stomach is unhappy with this decision. <clears throat> Did you see? I had a I had a antacid sitting here. Did you move it? I saw what looked like a Tylenol on the floor. Uh, Was it a tongue shape? Nope. All right, I have a little antacid here. <laughs> All of these have the mango habanero on them, Nate. Have you not been paying attention? They all have mango habanero. All right. We are gaining viewers with the nugget test. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. All right. Uh, man. As I, long as you see it. The Germantown. I, oh wait. Wait. Where am I? I don't know. Five. All right. The Germantown. Um, this is one of the emptier uh, bottles I've got left. So I don't know what that, what that says. But uh, let's, let's give it the old nugget test here. You are gaining viewers with the nugget test. What the fuck? I know, the old nugget test. Uh-oh. God damn it. Oh, Nate. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Ugh. Ugh. 
No, 55. That's fucking terrible. Holy shit. Ugh. What the hell? Oh, wait. Did I, did I not save the right number of nuggets? Do, you, do we have more nuggets? Can I have another nugget? I, I miscounted I'll, the nuggets. I'll get you another nugget. All right. I'm a little busy. I, I miscounted the nuggets. Um, God damn, that's bad. It, 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 that, like, acrid unpleasantness. Didn't you say that the first time? No. Well, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. It did not pair well with the nugget. OLHQ, how you do with these nugs? This is scientific. This is very data driven. Science. I think Trevor fell asleep hours ago. Meh. That's firmly in the meh category. I give that a 78. It's the same score I gave the other meh. Yeah, Trevor might be dealing with the harvest as we speak. All right. Let's hop in with this Jindo pick. Good nugget. But how did it do with the whiskey? Nope. 60. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Somebody, somebody with more time on their hands than I've got. Needs to go back in this stream. Pay attention to the notes I give for each of these whiskeys and figure out what it is in some of these whiskeys. I got goosebumps. That was so bad. So something in some of these whiskeys. So far, it's in number two, number five, and number seven. There was some flavor note in some of these whiskeys that is really unpleasant. Really unpleasant. Um, the rest of them either really work perfectly with the nugs or don't work perfectly, but they aren't bad with the nugs. It's kind of like, eh. But God, two, five, and seven are terrible. <laughs> Nate, yeah, no one knows what to say about this. All you can do is stare at the spectacle. I need that other nug, I'm, baby. I'm going. All right, this is the big one. This is the blackout pick. We got this blackout nug right here. Here we go. Let me get it on this rant. Thank you. Now that one, that works pretty well. Um, it does feel like it's missing something, but I could give it like a, maybe an 86. It's pretty solid. It does pretty solid on the nugget test. And by the way, for anyone watching who is worried that these nuggets are going to interfere with my results, I will give you... Nugget and non-nugget scores, just so you know. Just so you can decide how much influence the nugs will have on the board.
<laughs> Jason, Jason said this soft lit up his ass the last time he had it. Yeah, it'll light your ass up. There's no question. Uh, I guess it's like having my ass lit. It's so serious. Take from that what you will. Content. I'm here for it. Take from take from my my pleasure derived from spicy pain what you will. <laughs> put that on. I might put that on a t-shirt. If if they'll stop fucking DDoSing my t-shirt provider, I will definitely put that on a t-shirt. Oh man. Okay, here we go. The last one going in hard on this. Gonna get deep into the ranch on this nug. That won't affect it at all. It's the same amount of ranch. It's maybe less ranch. I gotta get the same amount of ranch. <laughs> <laughs> good nug. Does anyone know the amount of live streams in a row he's e ended up eating? Ooh, ooh, that one does good. That's a good nug. It's a good whiskey. Burning my tongue. I didn't eat last live stream. Did yeah, I? you did. You ate a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Did I? Oh. Oh. Yeah, you ate a bug. You ate a worm in the last one. But that's not eating. Eating the worm, I mean, that's not food. I don't know, guys. Does the worm count as food? He ate, <sighs> he swallowed it. When did I eat the burrito? Yeah, I don't remember a burrito. I do remember spaghetti, though. Oh, I ate that spaghetti. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> Warmest food. Thank you. Dude. That's really good. Dude. Like, like I love discovering things like this. That's so cool. Like, that's really good. I think I'm going to have to give that one an 88. All right. Now, for the most difficult part of the evening, math. Um, we're gonna math this up real quick. Uh, I don't know how to entertain people while I'm mathing. Normally, math is uh, my strong suit, but um, you know, nine pours of whiskey later, it can get a little hazy. Oh, yeah, you did definitely take some. Solid amounts out of those glasses. Oh, yes. Um, I would try to entertain the people, but I'm not camera ready tonight. And I'm painting. Well, well what Yolanda is painting uh, little Viking helmets. Do you want to show the camera at least? I mean... Can you please show the camera while I try to math and uh, no. really fail? No, my arms aren't long enough. There you go. She's painting little Viking helmets. What are Give those? Me a Glen what are the <laughs> They're helmets for my Glens. <laughs> All right, come on, Kyle. Fucking focus. Let's get this shit done. All right. Um Typing on my phone is hard. Okay, we're going to do this and have some sort of conversation while I do it. So, um, man, the nug test. Who would have thunk it? Drunk you. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I'm not drunk. I'm just drinking. George Thorogood. Although I say that, I'm having a real hard time with this math. 
Since I don't normally drink during these streams, should I be the one mathing these? Oh no, I'm doing great. I'm mathing the fuck out of these fucking numbers. <laughs> really convincing when you say you're mathing the fuck out of the, these fucking numbers. I know. Right? What would your previous math professor mother say to that statement? Oh god, she wouldn't even know how to deal with it. My mother hates swearing. Hi mom. We know you watch these. Hi Anne. I know she's watching this. We've had serious drop-offs since I started doing math, which is totally fair. The eating chicken nuggets, you stick around for that. When I start mathing, fuck that shit. Get out of the room. Okay. Um, we're so close. We're so close, guys. We're so close. Uh, okay. You know. Nate wants to know if he can find good bourbons in international airports. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, duty-free shops is a great place to find some fun whiskeys. Um, you just have to pay the duties when you when you uh, bring them into the country. But, yeah, duty-free shops can find some fun stuff. Matter of fact, a lot of people that have straight from the barrel, um, Blanton's straight from the barrel, Blanton's gold, just regular Blanton's, all those are very common duty-free shop finds. Yeah, we found none. We didn't find any. Um, depends on where you're traveling, also. Uh, Nate Mexico. said he's going to Mexico. You might have better luck in Mexico. Uh, Parker's? I've seen some Parker's pulls out of duty free shops as well. Um, uh oh. Would you like me to math for you? No. Wait, isn't this just addition? Yes. Oh, boy. But they're big numbers. They're all almost 100. Yeah, you can find some cool stuff in Cancun. By the way, Nate, why aren't you taking me to Cancun? Huh? I deserve a trip to Cancun. I had a stain on my shirt. Yeah, you dropped a nugget on it. <laughs> <laughs> like five minutes ago. <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> All right. And then uh, 88. So I'm going to give you guys. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys the nugget included scores first. Then I'll give you the nugget removed scores. So. This one went here. So, best score. It feels like you've been married to me for five years, Nate. Best score of the night, when you include the nugs, is once again, number eight, the blackout Indy to Jen's pick. It's one, I think, every time. Um, you don't play favorites. I really try not to. But uh, it won both the, the, the pre- and post-nug scores. So, shout out to the D-Gens for that pick. Second place is number four. Very close second place. The 11 and a half year Camp Nelson Bourbon Enthusiast pick. That one... Um, Actually, you know what? That one also won second place in the non nug Nate score. Wants you to prove it's blackout. I can't. Um, so that's second place, both. So first place, second place is blackout, 11 and a half year old Camp Nelson bourbon enthusiast pick. Um, those are first place and second place, everything else regardless. Did you get it from an anonymous stranger on the internet? No, I bought it from the Rural Inn. <clears throat> oh, yeah, but you don't have a sticker on it. Right, there's no sticker on it because it was from the Rural Inn, and I don't, for some reason, have the tag. All right, number three. Number three is... Number one. The Cask and Cellar pick. This one did very well in the Nug test, so I'm not surprised. Um... 
Blom Brothers, I believe, is MGP. And they, somebody else in the chat can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought Blom Bros was MGP. Um, it did not do number three on the non-nug test, but I'll get back to that one later. Number four on the nug test. Number three, the bourbon enthusiast. This is the younger bourbon enthusiast pick. So two of the, you know, top four whiskeys are the bourbon enthusiast picks. Good picks, B-E, T-B-E, whatever you want to call them. Number five, number five, number five, number five. I should put check marks next to these so I can keep track of what I have looked at. <clears throat> number five is number nine, which is the Mammoth Liquors pick. I got my number five on the Nug Test. Number six on the Nug Test is number two, which is the A1 Liquors. Did not do very good on the Nug Test. Number seven is number six, the Ohio Liquors pick. Did not do great on the Nug Test. And number eight and number nine, respectively, are the Tennessee Germantown. And dead last was the Jindo Michigan Brothers pick. Those really suffered uh, on the Nug Test. Both of them did terribly on it, which is one of the reasons I wanted to give you scores before and after the Nug Test. Man, we're down to eight viewers. They don't want to see math. They don't want to know winners. They want to watch me eat chicken nuggets. Good to know. Keep that in mind for future streams. Your channel just suddenly becomes a mukbang channel. Yeah, I'll do some mukbang. You guys want to see me do mukbang? If you don't know what that is, Google it. All right, let's do the non-nug test, a.k.a. the real test. Uh, number one is, once again, the Indy DeGens Rural Inn Blackout Pick. Got that number one slot with 260 points. Out of a possible 300, very good score. Number two is the Bourbon Enthusiast pick. Um, one point behind, very, very close second. The 11 and a half year Port, uh, I almost said Fort Nelson, Camp Nelson, 11 and a half year Bourbon Enthusiast pick. Very good job, the Bourbon Enthusiast. Number three is right next to it, the Bourbon Enthusiast eight and a half year pick. Two of my top three were Bourbon Enthusiast picks. And the other one, the other one was the Indy G Gens pick. That means, see, this is important information, guys. Like, that means that the top three whiskeys, all of them, were not selected by liquor stores. Yes, I know the Rural Inn was halvesies on these fucking D Gens picks. But that is very different. They don't, yeah, they clearly don't understand my style. That's true, Nate. Thank you for always supporting me. Um, <laughs> number four. No, now, 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 now. I'll tell you what. Oh, man. <laughs> Can you get it out in a sentence? Boy, let me tell you about this. Now, number four is the A1 Liquors pick. That was the pick I kind of shat on. I was kind of shitting on it. And the only picks that were above it were private barrels. The, again, I, the Rural End pick, I kind of consider a D-Gens pick because I know they drove that bus. So the D-Gens pick was number one, two, and three were private selections. Number four was the only liquor store pick that made the cut. Number five was OLHQ. No. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Tennessee, Germantown. I see Don Germantown. That was number five. Wait a minute. <sighs> okay. Math is hard. Numbers are hard. It's getting late. I'm getting drunk. Let's try this again. Number one was the blackout. Number two and three, respective uh, bourbon enthusiast picks. Number four, the A1 liquors pick. The fifth best scoring whiskey was number six which is the OLHQ pick shout out to the Ohio Liquor Control Board this is the only time I will ever shout out the Ohio Liquor Control Board because fuck liquor control 
Fuck the three tier system. Fuck liquor control. Let people drink. Let us have our whiskey. Damn it. I'll get off of my soapbox now. Number six is number one, the cask and cellar. Barrel two of three from 2017. Good job, cask and cellar. Number seven was number five. There's your Germantown. There's your Tennessee pick. Last two places. I hate to say it. Second to last place was the Jindo Michigan pick. It's such a shame because the guy who sent me that pick is such a good dude. I know he likes it. I know he thought I would like it. It's a shame. Uh, even bigger shame is the worst whiskey that I tried is a bottle that I own that's almost full, the Mammoth Liquors Valentine's Day pick. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a Warehouse F Floor 6. I think, honestly, that's part of it is it's one of the higher tiers, higher warehouse floors, and I typically don't prefer those. So I think that has something to do with it. But um, – but yeah, I, I do kind of like seeing that, you know, at this point I am not capable. I don't, I genuinely don't believe that at this point I'm capable of like playing favorites and be like, Oh, I'm going to make sure that blackout pick wins. I, I, I wasn't fucking doing that. I could barely keep track of my own brain. So it, it really is um, encouraging to see something win again and again and again. Uh, not because I want them to do well per se. I don't mind if they do well, but it re you know it reinforces the idea that like you you're consistent in what you enjoy. Uh, I will say that the the bourbon enthusiast picks do seem to have gotten better with time. I keep picking them higher and higher in these blinds. That's all I got, guys. That's all nine of them. Uh, I'll stick around for a little bit longer on the stream. What the hell? Drink some more whiskey. AMA. Yeah, let's do an AMA while I finish up these pours. I'm going to put them all in the one big whiskey slurry. How about that? Um, try to grab this cap that fell off my pen earlier. Let's do an AMA. If you have any questions for me, or Yolanda, she's off screen, but she can hear you when I read uh, them or mm -hmm. read them when she's on the stream. Let me know what your questions are. <laughs> Nate wants me to eat a nugget with the whiskey slurry. I'm not opposed to that, but Yolanda would have to fetch a nugget. So you'll have to convince her, Nate. I don't know why I'm doing it this way, but it's kind of fun to like cascade them across and just keep pouring them into the next glass. This is kind of a fun thing to do. It's not very really convincing, Nate. Let me pull it back so you guys can watch, watch this action. Watch this unfold. This is good content, I'm sure. Our dog is sleeping and snoring right below me. I was very glad to have you guys here with me. You know, it was kind of cool to see Jason from Mash and Drum pop in. Um, that dude's got like 20,000 subs. He, he doesn't need to join up for this, you know, this live stream, but maybe he likes you. He's a good dude. I mean, he, I think he likes me. Maybe, I mean, I'll take it, but he's a good dude. Appreciate that. I know a couple people in this chat are very well connected in the whiskey community. They don't need to do this, but they do because they enjoy it. <laughs> Nate says he doesn't. He told me. <laughs> oh, the ball busting is great, but you know, it, it, it's, I'm glad we can do this together. I love doing this stuff. It's a blast. It's so much fun. I look forward to these Sunday evenings. Um, so thank you guys for being a part of this because it really does make uh, it really does make my week a lot easier to start off. Even if I'm a little hungover on my Sunday mornings, which usually I'm okay. Um, Sunday mornings. Sunday Monday mornings. Usually I'm okay, but. Um, you know, it makes me a lot more chipper because uh, because I've had a good night. Nate asked when we can do a live stream together. I'm happy to figure out a way to do it, but you need to get better fucking internet, Nate. Then we can do a live stream. Ooh. 
Yeah, we can do a live stream together, Nate, when your internet doesn't cut out every third sentence. True. Shots fucking fired. All every right. Every Zoom call ever with Nate. Maybe we should just end it there. No more AMA. Kyle's done for the night. Here. Did you spill anything? Not as much as I anticipated. <laughs> Doesn't work with the slurry. Those negative flavors really show up strong. Hey, breathe. Ah. Whew. It's good water. Ah. I haven't right. tried, Nate. Uh, yeah, well, the only whiskey we found that Yolanda actually enjoys was that uh, very spicy rye when I watered it down. I think I might have turned it into a cocktail I put it on ice or something. I don't remember exactly what we did. We got one that she liked. I don't drink it nearly as much as Mr. The, the Drink Pro here. Well, I got time for one more question. Nate has thoroughly dominated the chat, and I hate, I, I, I must say, I highly appreciate his engagement. Um, I appreciate really. all. I appreciate all the Jew, all the all the Jews. All the Jews. <laughs> okay. I read Jin and I wanted to say viewers, and so I said Jewers. She doesn't really care for Jin. She's a vodka gal. I appreciate all my viewers, even if you don't comment, you don't have to comment. You're not required to be part of the live chat, but I it's do. It's more fun though. I do appreciate Nate being so active in the live chat because you're right; it is more fun. It it it, it adds something to this. No question about it. If there weren't questions, it would just be Kyle here talking about to himself, which is a really scary proposition. <sighs> well, it's almost eleven o'clock. Holy crap! Is it really? He well, no, that fucking my my computer clock is all wrong. It's ten forty eight. Is that why our kitchen clock is wrong still? I don't know. I'll go to bed. <clears throat> I'm gonna stick around till eleven o'clock, uh, and then we'll we'll call this a night. Um, is anyone in the chat asleep? Like, has someone fallen asleep to Kyle? Somebody gave the video a thumbs down. <laughs> the live stream. Yes, <laughs> that's the text I just got from Nate. <laughs> I mean, to be fair. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. <laughs> to be fair, you did make a nug test. Yeah, come on. It's. I mean, I'm having fun. Like, two people gave it a thumbs down. I don't get it either. Like, we're having fun. We're joking. It, it, you know, we're being lively. Like, I gave real tasting notes. I gave real rankings. And then I dicked around. I see no problem with that. If you want to give me a thumbs down, I'll give you a one finger salute. Well, it, here. It's not done yet, so don't judge it too hard. Speak for itself. That's what I was getting ready to say, Nate. Like, if you don't like it, you don't have to down... What? I don't know. I'm tired. You know, people, uh, people are going to hate... The players are going to play, and the haters are going to hate, and I just got to shake it off. Shake it off. I believe that was a great philosopher, Swift, who said that. They're just jealous of your boogie. They're just, of oh, my what? Boogie. Of oh, my boogie? Oh, I thought you said my booby. I'm like. Well, I mean, they could be jealous of that, too. <clears throat> Shimmy shake on the camera. There you go. <laughs> taking. And Nate is the only one taking. He just he takes and he takes and he takes. I don't care. That's fine. We're down to seven. Everyone's leaving. That's fine. I get it. It's late.
And I'm kind of done with the process. Like, if you didn't have anything to say or add, I'm obviously just kind of dicking around at this point. So I'm not surprised people leave. Um, <laughs> it does make me laugh, though. <laughs> People leaving makes you laugh? Yeah, you have to laugh at it. Yeah, there we go. Phone doctor, one, two, three. I enjoy your streams. I lurk in the back, but I'm here. Love the stag one. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. That was a real shit show, but in the most fun way possible. So I'm glad you enjoy the streams. Thank you for commenting. Um, yeah, I appreciate the comment in the chat, too, man. Um, we always wonder about the lurkers. Yeah, we, we kind of do. We kind of wonder, like, who's out there lurking. Um and, you know, I don't have a problem with it. If you if you just want to lurk, just lurk. If you got – I know a lot of people also uh, will watch these streams while they're doing something else. They've got, you know, they've got kids they're taking care of or they're working or whatever, and they want to throw a stream on the background. No problem. Um, but I'm just glad people are, are having fun with the content. They're enjoying it. I mean, that's the reason I do this. You know, I don't have to do live streams. It's not – it's not the – base of of the of the uh okay. the channel or of my vision for the show um i enjoy it and i enjoy chatting with people i enjoy seeing people enjoy what i'm doing uh it's just fun it's he just enjoys fun. the interaction yeah the interaction is really nice um <clears throat> i i will say that uh it's it's i i, I prefer when i'm able to video calls where you actually have like a, a real back and forth but the the chat and the live stream is a little bit better for the performative aspect um, that's part of the reason that i do video chat calls with the patreon um, i may or may not make that a more frequent thing um, at this point i'm doing monthly live streams uh, that are Patreon exclusives, I may turn those into monthly chats. Uh, partly because I enjoy that aspect of it, but partly also because I think, you know, adding that extra additional layer of connection is valuable. People, um, you know, when they're paying the monthly fee, you know, what 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 do they want from that? I, I like to think they want more access, they want more content, and they want special opportunities. And you know making the, pro the, the the live streams that I've been doing are fun and they're more intimate when you're in the Patreon streams, but adding the, the interactive content and, and, and quality, I think would be really cool. We've got the quarterly, um, maybe it's three times a year. I think it's quarterly, but I can't remember the, the upcoming tasting video, uh, which will not be posted. It's going to be a Patreon exclusive interactive Zoom call uh, is coming up very soon. I think that's going to be a good sort of dipping the toes in the water on whether or not I want to make the monthly Patreon exclusive videos uh, interactive in that way. I think I'll learn something about that process doing that. Um, I may also learn that I'm not going to stick with Zoom because for that call, I'll be signing up for a trial membership of Zoom Pro or whatever to cut uh, the time limitation off of it but if it's uh <laughs> nate's gonna upgrade his internet before that good um but you know I, I may move to google hangouts i may move to some other platform although i had a bad experience with google hangouts yesterday it, it was not performing the way i thought it ought to we'll find a way to make it work though we can make it happen this little slurry on the nose Honestly, on the nose, it smells a lot like Wild Turkey 101. <laughs> it really does. Like, I mean, the proof on this is 110, but this smell reminds me of 101. Yeah, man, I'd be happy if you joined. I mean, there's, there's even at the, the, there's a lot of different levels, and Nate would tell you, and I think he's right, that the $12 level is the best value because you put you into the, the um, sample or a uh, club where you're going to get some fun things, but even the $3 level gives you access to a lot of additional content. Right now I'm doing weekly videos, uh, doing every stag batch. You mentioned actually uh, enjoying the stag review. 
Well, after that crazy live stream, I ended up going back. And now for every once a week, I'm releasing a different tasting, uh, uncut, unedited, just straight up me sitting down and tasting the Stag Junior batches 1 through 14. Uh, because I want to get a number ranking and see if my, you know, massive all-in-one live stream ranking is worth anything compared to individual, much more defined, much more refined tasting processes. So it'll be a fun time. But uh, but yeah, Nate will definitely advocate for me on that, which I might very much appreciate. But uh, yeah, man, it, it's definitely worth. It's definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, it's definitely worth considering because. Honestly, I mean, honestly, at this point, you're getting more value than the money you pay. Like, I, I'm, I'm losing money on the Patreon. Um, and part of it's because I really want the engagement. I want you guys to feel like you're getting something out of it. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's a lot of fun. It builds the engagement and it makes it easier for me to do things. So I'm happy to pour some of my own money into this to help it grow. And you get just daily insights sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Like the video I, did you post the video I sent you with the cookies? You forgot, didn't you? Send it, remind me and I'll post it tomorrow. So there you go. More content's going to be posted tomorrow. What is this video? The cookies. When I gave you the cookies. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty good. The slurry is not half bad. You know, this was a lot of whiskey to taste all at once. These were pretty hefty samples. And uh, I have a bad habit of, of finishing what's in the glass or getting damn close. So I think in the future I may have to uh, be a little bit more choosy with my pours. But I'm feeling great. I'm full of chicken nugs. I got whiskey. No problem. I see no problem here. Yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Michael's uh, gonna, excited for the samples. It's going to be a fun time. Uh, I sent out samples A through F, unlabeled, uh, totaling eight ounces of whiskey. Um, I'm looking forward to getting people's notes on it. And... Uh, getting, you know, a sense of what people think about it. And then we're going to do a big reveal at the end. So my plan for that, for the, for the sample video is I'll solicit notes. I'll offer my notes. We'll do that for each letter. And at the end, a big reveal. Could be a fun time. <laughs> yeah, so Nate mentioned the Mellow Corn store pick. I, I did get my hands on a store pick of Mellow Corn. It is not part of the sample pack, but... Uh, a bar in Portland. It's not the only one. This has happened in multiple locations. There is a bar in Portland where the, the bar itself was given the opportunity to do a, a pick of, of a Heaven Hill. And they requested to do a pick of Mellow Corn, um, which is the most Portland thing ever. But we did a side-by-side. -side. It's much darker. It's much richer. And it's, it's more complex than your standard Mellow Corn. It's good, it's good stuff. So he's thinking about buying another case. <laughs> oh man guys it, it's been a lot of fun but uh it's almost 11 o'clock and i do have to work in the morning thanks so much for joining thank you for being a part of the channel thank you for engaging thank you for watching um i hope you consider subscribing if you're not already if you are thank you so much for sticking around you all keep drinking like professionals i'm gonna try it uh to go to bed. <laughs> That's what I'm going to try to do. So, all right, guys, cheers. Hold on. How do I end this stream? There we go. <laughs>